let's jump into these book recommendations for books that changed my life, adults. My name is Amanda and I'm here with... Hi, I'm James. And today we are sharing books, uh, some readers advisory. This is part of our celebration of last National Library Week. So we are at the front end of National Library Week. We're gonna be having some really cool events throughout the week. We're gonna share some more with you in the closing when we share some upcoming events, but there are some great things coming up, I promise. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and take myself off camera and we are gonna hear from James about some of the books that he would like to share with you. Hi everyone, thanks for attending. So um, the first book that I want to highlight is actually a graphic novel. It's an anthology series called Puerto Rico Strong, a comic anthology supporting Puerto Rico disaster relief and recovery. Um, it does have multiple authors and it does have multiple artists. Um, this was actually put together by a group of editors, including Marco Lopez, Desiree Rodriguez, Hazel Newlevent, Derek Ruiz, and Neil Schwartz. And basically this was put together and sold um, in 2018 for a Hurricane Maria relief, uh, Maria relief for the island of Puerto Rico. Released in 2018 by Oni Lion Forge Publishing Group. It just has a whole bunch of different stories about the island of Puerto Rico, its history, um, artists and writers kind of dealing with their feelings and things that were happening at that time. So, um, one of the the stories that I really really enjoyed was um, called Pasitos Grandes by Tristan Tarwater and Cynthia Santos. And this story actually takes place in a space station in 2062. And it's a teacher with a group of students in the future. And they're basically talking about the history of the Puerto Rican diaspora in North America and the United States in the 20th and 21st centuries. The art style is simple, it's very, very colorful, it actually kind of looks like an animated episode of um, Fantasia, one of those little vignettes from the Disney film. Um, so it's it's really, really like easy to follow, very, very colorful. Um, and one of the things I just like about the story is like after uh, he goes through the history and everything like that, he says, siempre pa'lante, nunca pa atrás, which basically means always forward, never back. So it's always looking forward to the history of Puerto Rico and Puerto Ricans in the United States. Um, let me go ahead and go on to my next book, if you please. All right, the second book that I'm gonna recommend, this was published in 2018 by Harper, uh, 2017 um, by Harper. It's called Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, the triumphant, turbulent stories behind how video games are made. This was written by Jason Schreier. Jason Schreier is a former reporter for Kotaku. He's currently with Bloomberg News and he focuses on the video game industry. Um, and this is a collection of just behind the scenes stories of a whole bunch of different video games that were basically put together in the early 2010s to more modern games up to about 2017. I read this in about 2018, 2019 or so. Um, and it had a couple of really, really interesting stories. I'm really, really interested in video games and kind of understanding how they're made. So this kind of runs the whole spectrum to seeing like, um, very, very small market games done by indie developers to very, very large games done by multi-billion dollar publishers with very, very large development teams. Um, two of the games that are very, very interesting that it highlights is one by uh, one called Stardew Valley, and it's basically created by a solo developer, and it took him about six years from about 2011 to 2016. Um, he created it as an homage to a video game that he really, really enjoyed. And he taught himself how to do everything. He taught himself how to code, how to script, how to do the art. And he found himself a distributor to distribute on a whole bunch of different platforms. And basically after the six years of him developing this game, it goes on to sell 1.5 million copies in the first six months. And it was very, very popular. People really, really enjoy it still sold and still very very popular today so really really interesting to see how this one gentleman did all of this uh, another one that's really really interesting that it highlights is one called star wars 1313 um this was actually um started production in 2010 by lucas arts lucas arts is a really really popular developer did a lot of video games in the uh 1990s and the early 2000s um, but unfortunately, they kind of got folded in and went under. Um, in 2012, 
the developers actually released a trailer of this game at uh, E3, and there was a tech demo and everything, and everybody was very, very excited for it. Um, the premise of the game that you is that you played a bounty hunter in the Star Wars universe, um, and it was just made by a very, very large development team of, at that time, probably about 100 developers or so, and the game never came out. So it's actually really interesting to see why that happened, why the game didn't come out, even though it showed quite a bit of promise. Um, and it has other games that it highlights in there, Dragon Age Origins, um, Halo Wars, just very, very fascinating stuff that you don't necessarily think about or aren't necessarily aware of when it comes to developing video games in the video game industry. So those are my two book recommendations. Now, if you're really, really interested in finding these books, we do have them in our catalog at hcplc.org. Um, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels is, is available in print, um, but both of these are also develop, um, available electronically through one of our major resources. And Amanda, if you could, let's go to our resource shout out. They're available through Hoopla. Hoopla is one of our ebook resources. It has access to uh, electronic books, electronic audiobooks, comics, TV shows, films, all included with your Hillsborough County Public Library card. Log into the service. You can check out anything immediately. There's no waiting list or anything like that. You can view them on your computer. You can view them on a mobile uh, device like your tablet or your cell phone. And everything is, like I said, available immediately. No lines, no waiting, no holds list or anything like that. And so I, anybody has any questions? Yes, I will back up, James, that Hoopla is a great service. And why we're highlighting this one today is because our first, or James's first recommendation, let's go back and look at that, uh, Puerto Rico Strong is a graphic novel. So uh, this is one of our best services, uh, the best digital services that we've encountered. They've really, it's really, um, the reader for graphic novels has gotten so much better, uh, improved, improved. So a lot of people kind of were, I think in the beginning, were hesitant to cross over because there is that, that aspect, that tactile aspect of books, you know, even in regular print books, just regular print books, people, you know, it is a very different experience to have the book versus an e-reader. You did get a lot of quite a bit of convenience with this, but I think in the last four years or so, the comic book, um, the reader in the comic book and Hoopla has really become very, very good. So if you are a reader of comics and graphic novels, I would definitely check that out. And something, this is obviously books that changed my life, adults, but they do have it for all ages. They have novels for kids, for tweens, teens, and adults. And it's quite a um, quite a variety of titles there. Uh, so that's something you may want to check out. And of course, uh, that is one of, as you mentioned, James, we'll go back to that slide. Actually one of the six categories of content they have, which are uh, digital books, digital audio books, music, uh, streaming music, uh, graphic novels, e digital graphic novels, and then streaming television shows and streaming movies. So it is a wonderful resource. It is actually one of my favorite. I use it every day. Uh, it's one of the apps I use at least once every day. So if you are not using that, I would def definitely recommend that. So as a reminder, this is a live interactive program. So if you have any questions for James about the books he shared, or about if you'd like to share some books that changed your life, we would love to hear those and share your recommendations with the audience. I do wanna go back as we speak about these books so people can see the um, title information. So please feel free, we have time to take questions. We definitely have time to take questions. So with the first one, I do wanna start with a question we have, James. So you mentioned, um, you mentioned this is, I think this is a really, great idea for an anthology. It's very interesting and it tied in, obviously, even doing it um, prior to Maria, it's just still a really interesting, you know, the Puerto Rican diaspora and the talking about those stories and hearing it from many different voices and seeing it from many different illustrators. You mentioned the, it's, it's quoted in the story you enjoyed, the quote, um, you know, Padelante nunca para atrás, going forward, never going back. Would you say any, or is it mainly in English or are there stories in Spanish or is it a mix of English and Spanish in the book? 
Um, in the book, it's primarily in English. There are some stories that have Spanish in them, but they are translated in each one of those stories. So you're able to follow, uh, follow along. Um, there are a couple of stories that talk about the indigenous people of Puerto Rico, the Tainos. Um, there isn't anything in the Taino language, unfortunately, but um, they are shown as translated from Taino with the, within the story. Very cool, very cool. Um, and then how did you end up finding this book? Is it something where one of, do you follow one of the authors who contributed or did you just, because sometimes I know like when I'm following an author, I just wait to see what they have publishing and what's coming out. Or sometimes I just, uh, I enjoy checking out the new books, you know, uh, when we put out the new books in the catalog or the new books uh, in Overdrive, just kind of see what's coming out. So how did you end up finding this book? Um, I became really interested within the past couple of years of learning a little bit more history about Puerto Rico. Um, I've been here in the States most of my life. I don't really have that experience with the island. So I was interested in learning the history of the people and learning the history of my culture. So searching through our library catalog, this is one of those items that came up. So I said, let me go ahead and give it a try. And since I was able to get it immediately through Hoopla, it was very, very easily accessible. And one thing I wanna highlight with um, Hoopla that's really, really great for graphic novels as well is within the reader, you do have options for multiple views. So you can view like two pages, you can view a single page, or if you wanna zoom into like a single frame or a single cell within a page, it'll allow you to do that as well. So you can actually get in there and really, really get detailed with the art and you know, view it in really, really great detail. And it does pick up where you left off. So if you want to read on your computer and then move over to a mobile device, it'll remember exactly where you were. So you can pick up wherever you left off, wherever you want to read it. And I think that's a really, um, first of all, I do like that feature a lot. They do have the zoom in feature, which is very nice, even for some of the text, which can be a little small. Like for example, if you were reading on a tablet and you wanted to use that zoom in feature, for the art or for the text just to make it a little bigger i know i've done that in the past and i also think that's a really cool way um you mentioned you know learning just about the culture i think an anthology is a great a great idea a great way to do it because you're getting many people's stories many people's voices and as we all know you know there's no culture that is a monolith so you're getting a lot of different you know a lot of different experiences tied into that history which is, is which is very neat very interesting about how many stories would you say are in this anthology um I believe it was about 15 to 20. There are quite a few. Some of the stories are a little bit on the longer end uh, at around like 10 to 15 pages. There are a few that are maybe five or six. Um, the entire anthology is probably about 280, 290 pages or so. Um, and in some of the front matter and some of the, the end matter of the book, it does have a couple of like letters and asides from some of the authors and from some of the artists just talking about like how they feel and why they contributed and such as well. Oh, very nice, very interesting. And then we do have, let's move on to the second book, a question about that. So it sounds like this is um, an interesting book and I like to read books uh, about a lot of different subjects, but do you have to have a knowledge of gaming to, to be able to follow along or does it kind of give you what you need to, to pick up? with it. it. It not only does it give you what you need, but it's actually really, really great reading this through Hoopla because as the stories go on within um, each like small story in each collection, there's actually a little asterisk that if you click on it, it'll take you to a footnote that'll give you a little bit more context for some of what's going on within the story. So it may talk a little bit about the developer or um, the game director or some of the artists or some of the company, um, or it'll talk about what's going on in the video game industry at that time. So it gives you everything that you need um, to actually understand the context of everything that's going on within each article and each story. Very nice. Very, yeah, because I like that sometimes you pick up and you learn about things, but you feel like a little bit in over your head. Like, so with some histories or some sort of some things, you're like, oh, maybe I should have read something else first. But it sounds like you can kind of start with this. And it is a collection of essays, correct? It's a collection of correct. stories, different essays. So uh, it's it's a like kind of a many stories involved. Well, I'm going to go ahead and Sorry. come back 
camera. We do still have time if anybody would like to share with us in the um, any more questions. If we have, we would love more. Uh, or if you have more, we would love to answer them is what I mean. But also, um, if you want to share any of the books that uh, changed your life or the books even you would just love. It doesn't even have to be a life changing book. It could be one like, oh, I just read this book. It's so good. I want everybody to run out and read it. I know I feel that way often with good books. I just want to share it with the world. So um, while we are waiting for some more information there, I do want to remind you how you can contact us. So if you have any questions about any of our services, using your library card, or even getting signed up for a library card, you can give us a call at 813-273-3652. You can also connect with us with, at hcplc.org slash contact. Uh, that is a online way to connect with us and ask those questions and get connected to those services. As we mentioned, it is National Library Week. We love sharing our library stories. We love sharing our the books we love, the places we love, the libraries we love, the stories we love with you but we would love to hear yours as well. So if you have a library story, whether it's a favorite memory, a favorite book, or just something about the services that you wanna give, um, that you wanna share about, you can always submit your library story at hcplc.org slash about slash stories. Again, we love to hear that. We would love to hear from you, National Library Week or anytime after. Um, speaking of National Library Week, we have a bunch of great events coming up throughout the rest of the week. This Thursday, the 8th, we will be doing a look at our service called Novelist. The program is called The Next Book, and it is Thursday, April 8th at 6.30 p.m. This is for teens and adults, but it's learning how to use our Novelist service. Novelist is one of the um, library databases we have. And basically, it's a service where you can use, you can um, take the books you like, the books, the authors, the genres and series you like, and use those to get recommendations and find new reads. It is really great. Uh, as I was saying in our last program, sometimes when you're reading a good series or a great book, it comes to an end and it's that feeling of fulfillment, but then it's also that feeling of what to read next. So if you want to find out what to read next, definitely out the next book and learn how to use novelists. Uh, another cool thing I do want to bring up is on April 9th, Friday, April 9th at 6.30 p.m., we will be closing out National Library Week with a very cool event, our first ever virtual trivia night. Go to hcplc.org slash events to register for any of our upcoming events. Right. We'll be open to, it's open. You can play as a solo, play as a team. It will be a lot of fun prizes will be involved so you can test your knowledge of books, movies, and some different pop culture items at Library Trivia Night. Okay, so it looks like we do not have any further questions. So I just want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight and getting some of these great recommendations from James, who I also want to thank for sharing those library books with us and sharing those recommendations. So everybody have a wonderful evening and have a fantastic National Library Week. Thank you so much. And we hope we'll see you at a future program. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night.